So today we'll be looking at a gravel scan. Now when you're working with a stochastic or noisy material, it's going to be quite easy to use the AI tiling tools to fix the seams. So I wasn't really too worried about this material. Now the only problem is that I didn't bring my measuring tools to measure out the capture area that I, that I got. So I'm going to show you guys how to fix that inside of Art Engine. Here we are inside of 3D Zephyr for the 3D reconstruction. Uh, you'll notice that I placed my gray cards um, as part of the capture. And the reason I did this is because I didn't bring my measuring tools um, to lay out the, the two by two grid that I normally would do. So instead um, I laid my white balance cards out and we're gonna use these as like reference for scale inside of Art Engine to um, understand actually how large this surface was captured. And then we're gonna use the mutation nodes to kind of fix uh, some of the the scale issues here. Okay, so we're just inside of Art Engine. Uh, we're just putting our data set in as usual, composing that to a full material. And I'm just gonna leave the first chunk of this running in real time because I wanna show you what I do with the mutation node to address the, the scaling issues that we have. So I won't be using seam removal, so we're gonna use the mutation to generate this full material. Switching this to 4K and I'm just going to hide my VRAM bar and I'll scroll right down to the world scale section and you'll notice I'm going to use the tape measure tool and what this is going to allow you to do is bring essentially a tape measure and you can go ahead and just measure a part of your material. So I'm going to use my uh, grade cards here and I know that one of these is, is about 9-10 centimeters. So what I'm using this to do is I'm going to type in 9 centimeters and immediately it's going to show that the scan was about 240 centimeters captured. I'm just going to do my output to 250. So we can just kind of do something a little bit more even, like a 2.5 meter. And that's going to set the scale for the output. And then next I'm going to use the mass paint and just kind of scrub out those cards because we obviously don't want them into our final material. So the mutation node is really, really useful for, you know, fixing scale issues like what I had here. I didn't have any measuring tools. Um, if you have some current library assets that have like a really weird scale and you want to either up the scale or just kind of fix the text density so that it fits your project a bit better. Um, the mutation node with the pixel resolution and the world scale settings, that's kind of the way to go to address any um, scale issues that you have with your materials. So I'm just gonna let that compute. And once this is done, um, it should just essentially create a fully tileable version of the material with the white balance cards scrubbed out. So I'm using the ignore mask to remove those from the computation. And so from here on out, this is sped up uh, 1.5 times. So I'm just kind of just checking the maps always check your maps after you run any of the AI procedures, just to make sure everything's looking okay. So just going over the seam line. I mean, like all in all, like that's kind of all you need to do to really fix a material like that. Um, but instead what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna use the albedo generation node and we're gonna do a little bit of delighting to the, the color map. So the original one had quite a few small like contact shadows around the, the rocks and stuff. So um, we're gonna try and use the albedo generation to essentially just wipe out any extra shadow detail that we had in the original capture. Now, the finicky thing about the albedo generation node is, uh, first of all, it does take quite a while to compute, especially if you put a height map into it. Um, I don't really suggest you use just the albedo generation node on its own, which is why you see me uh, stringing up a levels node and a color match and then other levels on top of that. Um, and I'll show you why in just a second. And, you know, my usual self is when things are computing, I kind of build up the chain further on. I just, I'm just sharpening my normal map in that little area there. So I'm going to make sure that I close on my other applications. I just realized that I had a bunch of other stuff open. So just back to the albedo gen. So that's the result that you would get without any tweaks. So you see that it kind of blows it all out. So you do want to level it back up and push the, the midtones back up a little bit. And that's going to give you a better looking albedo map. And um, I don't like the colors that it kind of gave me. So I'm actually color matching it back to the original. 
So now I have a more flattened version of the original map. And then I'm going to add another levels node to the end of it and just re-add a little bit of that contrast back into it. There we go. So now we have a pretty cool like delit map there. And I'm just going to run this through a sharpen. So I didn't do this in my other videos, but I'm going to kind of give it a try and just run some sharpens filters on my outputs. So I'm just sharpening the color map and I already sharpened the normal map. Uh, for the reference generation, I'm going to actually use one of the presets. So the presets are actually based off of the Quixel Megascans chart that was released like quite some time ago. Um, again, they're just approximations. They're not like any, any type of measured data. It's just a starting point for you to you know, have a set of presets that you can pick and then kind of wiggle from there. Um, so essentially, I'm just going to put these back into the Compose Material node. And I mean, already we, we, you know, we made a, um, a fully tileable material with the mutation node and we fixed the scaling issues. Uh, we went through the albedo, did the albedo generation to cancel any extra lighting information. We did some sharpening on the normal map. So I'm just kind of lowering the sharpness on the normal map here. And it's checking it out in the 3D viewport. Um, so for the 3D viewport, I actually like to use the warehouse HDRI map with a, a lower gamma value to it. I'm going to switch into wet lawn this time just to see how it looks like in a different condition. That's looking pretty cool. And yeah, I mean, like I mentioned in the, earlier in the video, um, these noisy type of materials like sand and dirt and things like mud and even bit, um, some grass as well. Um, the AI you know, mutation and scene removals are pretty much going to do a really, really good job on them. So there's not really not too much in terms of cleaning up or processing uh, for this video. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time doing what I can to clean up my graph just so I remember what the heck I did if I ever come back to this. Uh, this graph here. So just going ahead and just adding some labels to it. Um, so one thing that I did in the mutation node there that you see, um, you can switch the output to either output a material or output bitmaps. So I did switch it to output as bitmaps, which is why all the channels are exposed. That way you can kind of like modify things after uh, one of those nodes are run. So just doing my final output frame and yeah, and I haven't even saved my file yet, so I think I'm going to go ahead and do that right now near the end of the video. And we're just going to export this again into Marmoset and we'll just check it out there. Okay, so we're just going to do one final check inside of Marmoset tool bag. So I don't have ray tracing on this time. Um, I felt like it kind of doesn't really record very well. So um, what I'd like to do into in Marmoset tool bag usually is sometimes I'll actually just tweak my diffuse color a little bit depending on the, the shot. So I did feel like it was a little bit warm on the original color. So I did add it, add a little bit of tint of a blue to it uh, for my final renders. But what I usually like to do is just turn off the albedo map and switch this to kind of like a mid gray. Um, again, what I really want to see here is just, just try to evaluate the, the height data that I have and make sure that everything's captured quite nicely. So I did take quite a few photos for this guy, so it did turn out a lot nicer than the, the cracked concrete that I did in the previous video. Um, but yeah, I mean, there you have it. Um, again, no, materials like this are pretty quick to do with the AI tools. So um, definitely check it out if you're doing a lot of like natural ground surfaces and so forth. Uh, okay, well, thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully we'll see you uh, for the next video.